Subscribe now for hundreds of true scary stories and real monster sightings. Wait till the end of the video for the discussion question as well. Beware the golden arches. This world is a strange one. McDonald's is the most successful fast food restaurant in the world. It may not be the healthiest place, but it sure is convenient and delicious. But even the most falsely happiest of places can be riddled with dangers and horrors. Ghosts lurk around every corner, perverts and creepy strangers watch us from afar, and creatures of the unknown wait to make us their prey. So, to make sure you have nightmares of every possible location, here are five true scary stories of McDonald's submitted by viewers. If the burgers don't kill you, something will. Number 1. drive through Ghost Submitted by Maynard 2015. I worked for my local McDonald's for about four months. Yeah, it didn't last long. I like to believe that there's something better for me out there than fast food. Plus, this experience didn't exactly make me want to stay. It's definitely the creepiest thing that's ever happened to me. Trying to kiss ass and move up quickly, I let the managers know that I would cover any shift they needed me to, and I could fill in for any call-ins. I needed the money. The more hours, the better. Well, one night at around 8 p.m., just before my bedtime, yay, I got a call from work. Someone from the night shift had called in. Very irritated and tired, I hesitantly agreed to cover the shift and got up to get ready. I had never worked overnight before, not at that McDonald's and not at any of my previous jobs. I was kind of excited. I mean, it was night. There would be at least half as many customers coming through, and the manager on duty was John, the most laid-back guy that worked there. Easy money. When I arrived around 8.30, they were slammed. I clocked in and chiseled away at the mountain of customers in the lobby. By 10.30, the sudden wave had died down and the building was mostly empty. The previous shift leader left me with nothing but a good luck, even though this was my first night shift. So it was just me and John. He was busy checking drawers or something, while I manned the drive through the front counter, and the grill. Needless to say, I was nervous. If too many people pulled in, I was fucked. My drive through time would be horrid. So, instead of remaining relaxed like I thought I would, I ended up so focused that my heart was pounding the whole night. Anyway, at our restaurant, I'm not sure if it's the same for every Mickey D's, our headsets will chime whenever someone pulls into the drive through It's a kind of pixelated bell sound that gets very annoying, very fast. This is exactly what I heard all of a sudden. So, naturally, I greeted the customer. Hi, welcome to McDonald's. How can I help you today? I said with so much fake enthusiasm, it even made me sick. I never quite understood if it was a magnet or a scale that told us if a car drove through, but the microphone was on, ready to pick up the customer's voice as they ordered. Yet, all I heard was white noise. Nobody picked up. Nobody spoke. I didn't even hear the rumble of an engine idling. It was as if no one was there. Now, this wasn't too weird. We've had this happen a few times since I started. The thing can be triggered just by someone driving around the building or a person walking by. The thing needed fixed, that's for sure. I didn't want to know every time someone took out the trash in the back as they rolled the bins over the drive through After about three minutes of static, the mic clicked off, meaning whatever was on the wait was gone. Finally, no more annoying noise in my ear. But less than a minute later, it clicked on again, that bell chiming loudly in my ear. I rolled my eyes and repeated my greeting. Hi, welcome to McDonald's, how can I help you? And again, there was no reply. The mic stayed on longer this time, though. I swear, at one point I could hear heavy breathing. I started to get freaked out. At that moment, I was pretty sure someone was outside trying to mess with me. It turned off after about 10 minutes of me listening to nothing. 
I was tempted to take off the headset and make John wear it, but my be-all-I-can-be attitude got the better of me. I tried to distract myself, and I started scrubbing the counters, which had already been wiped down, and checking to see if anything in the lobby needed restocked. But everything was fine. I needed to keep myself busy. There was just something so sinister about the darkness of the night just beyond those large lobby windows. When the bell chimed once again, I nearly fainted. I should have probably turned the volume down on that headset. Before I could say my shallow, meaningless greeting, I heard the loudest, blood-curdling scream. The moment I heard this screech, I threw off my headset and backed away from it. What the hell was that? Shakily, I put my headset back on. I was pissed and terrified at the same time. Without another thought, I ran angrily out of the store and headed toward the drive through I stood right next to the menu, and there was no one there. But still, somehow, the static from my headset never disappeared. The mic was still going. Whatever made the drive through go off was still there. And then I heard it. I see you. A slowly whispering voice coming from the mic. I ran back inside as fast as I possibly could. I had been standing right next to the mic. No one was there. No one could have possibly made that sound. There was no one that could have spoken those words to me. I ran back into the light and warmth of the building and into the safety behind the counter. I found John. He was at the manager's desk, head in his hand, while typing in dates on the upcoming schedule. What the hell was that? I said louder than I meant to be. He jumped in his chair and turned around. Christ, man, you scared the hell out of me. What are you trying to pull? I asked. What are you talking about? I haven't done anything. He turned to continue typing on his computer. I kind of felt bad. I just interrogated my superior. The only fun superior that worked there. Shit. I walked up front and stood behind the counter, just waiting. It was about 1.30 when I looked at the clock again. We were about halfway through the graveyard shift. The night was going by so slow. I ended up just standing in the drive through nook. That way I could just play on my phone away from the view of the nearest camera. We had had only two customers in the last hour, so it was even more slow than I thought it would be. So I just stood there, leaning against the counter by the POS computer, playing Clash of Clans and checking Facebook every so often. But suddenly, I felt cold air on my forearm. It gave me chills. I looked over toward the drive through window, and it was ever so slightly open. I didn't mind. I paid it no attention and continued to invade random online folks. Slam! I dropped my phone, breaking the screen when it hit the ground. I nearly had a heart attack. My eyes darted all over, searching for the origin of that noise. The drive through window had been thrown wide open but I had been standing right next to it. I hadn't heard anybody run off or walk up, and I definitely hadn't seen anybody. So who the fuck just opened the drive through window? I was done. I took my headset off and stood in the kitchen pretending to work, waiting for this terrible shift to end. Whether or not someone drove through the drive through I didn't care anymore. I wasn't coming back after that night. The rest of the night, or morning, I guess, passed by without any further incidents. Never in my life have I encountered anything so strange and terrifying. Standing out there, right next to the microphone that cold night, then hearing those words whispered to me. I will never forget it, and I will do anything in my power to avoid having to work fast food. And I am no longer a fan of horror movies. I know I'm in denial, but I pray every day that what I heard that night was nothing but a prankster, not a ghost or a demon that felt like taunting me. But if that's really what it was, I'm scared that there's nothing stopping it from happening again. Number 2. Pervert at the Habit Trail Submitted by Close Call 
Remember when McDonald's had those jungle gyms with the ball pits? Yeah, for the longest time, those were the hotspot for children to jump around and just have a shit ton of fun. Hell, I even remember as a child playing with my temporary friends in those balls. Every time we'd go to McDonald's, I'd gleefully find other kids I hadn't met before and we'd jump into that rainbow-colored pit. Now, though, with a child of my own, I've heard plenty of horror stories that will make me keep my kids away from the habit trails altogether. Well, actually, it's not so much the horror stories I've heard that scare me. It's an experience that happened not too long ago. I try not to let my kids eat fast food. It's disgusting, it's unhealthy, and it's addictive. Eating fast food in and of itself is a terrible habit. But there is one thing it does have that tempted me to treat my daughter and son to a couple of Happy Meals one day. Convenience. Around noon, I was enjoying my day off with the kids. My wife was at work and I hadn't bought groceries like I was supposed to. Not to mention I was exhausted from work. This was my first day off in a very long while. So, when my son Chris started begging for McNuggets, I thought, what the hell? and stopped on by our local artery clogging experts. That McDonald's was extremely packed. There had to have been four dozen people in there either lined up waiting to order or sitting down awkwardly staring at each other. Expectedly, the moment the kids saw the play area through the windows in the back, they took off. They hadn't even told me exactly what they wanted to eat. Figured though, they probably only wanted to stop by McDonald's to play on the habit trail. After several minutes, I was finally up to order. I got them both a couple of Nugget Happy Meals and headed to the play area and sat down at a bench. The kids frolicked and played all over the damn thing with ten other children, most of which looked like they hadn't been bathed in a week. As you can probably tell, I'm not very fond of the McDonald's scene. But again, I was desperate that day. If a big hunk of plastic tubes and ladders could babysit my kids for an hour, I was fine with that. The kids played for about 10 minutes before they finally came down to eat their food. We were enjoying our meal when I noticed something rather strange. There was a chubbier child in the ball pit. He was redheaded with curly hair. What was strange was the expression on his little face. He looked like he was about to cry at any moment. He was frowning and tearing up, his eyes locked on one point in the room. I looked to see what he was staring at. It was just a glass window with lightly busy midday traffic just beyond it. So I just kept eating my food, trying not to pay any mind to the motionless kid. But for every bite I took, I was more and more... worried? Curious? I mean, my kids were here too. If this kid was crying, I'd like to know why. Eventually, he pulled himself up out of the ball pit and began to walk back over to a woman that must have been his mother. But on the walk over, I noticed the kid's pants were down, and he started pulling them back up. My first thought was, Jesus Christ, this kid just shit in the ball pit. And at that point, I was ready to leave. My appetite was gone, the appetite I barely had in the first place. I let my kids finish eating, though, not saying a word about what I saw. Once they were done, I told them we had to go, and despite their whining efforts to make me stay, I made them get back in the car. Well, later that week, I was reading the newspaper. I made the mistake of drinking hot coffee when I read a certain article. I literally sped it out on myself when I read it. At that very same McDonald's that we had gone to, a man had been arrested for, get this, sexually assaulting children while hiding in the ball pit. Holy shit. Luckily, my kids had never gone in there themselves that day, but they had been so close to it. And in the headline photo, there was a woman being interviewed. She was crying. It was that chubby boy's mother. I remembered her face and that red hair. This moment terrified me, shocked me more than I had ever felt before. I feared for my children and for the society as a whole. We let our kids run around, play, and trust that the world built around us is safe and protected. But that day, right under my nose, was someone that, within seconds, could have ruined my children's lives, forced a lifetime of therapy on them, and took away their normalcy from then on. 
I am so grateful that my kids were spared that. I can only pray that that poor little boy grew up all right and that that perverted fucker got what he deserved. Also, if you're wondering about the case itself, this happened around 89, and I've tried a few times these days to find it online. But I guess it's just not on the web. Doubt the story if you want, but as a father, I'm not spreading this to tell some disgusting lie. I'm telling you this story as a warning and a cautionary tale. No matter how you've raised your kids, stay close to them and keep your eyes open. Number 3. Bathroom Creeper Submitted by M. Perkins Public bathrooms have always scared me. In school, no matter how bad I had to go, I would not use the bathrooms. I just couldn't even force myself to use them. I mean, I've seen kids make fun of other kids just for going to the bathroom. Kids are horrible. I wanted to avoid that at all costs. People simply scared me. They would embarrass you, humiliate you, hurt your feelings all over something so natural and stupid. So for most of my life, I avoided public restrooms. But one day, this was in 2002, we were driving through Dallas at the end of a road trip on our way home. It was me and two other friends, Jessica and Ruby. It was maybe 11 at night and we were on the highway. They were starving. I was tired but had to pee bad. And we were still an hour from home. I had already been holding it for about two hours. I'm surprised I even made it that far. Anyway, we were passing one of the many dozens of random McDonald's in Dallas, and Jessica suggested we pulled over and take a break. Of course, I was extremely hesitant about using the bathroom there. I would almost rather pee in a bottle in the car than go into a public restroom. For the first time in my life, my body won out on this one. I got out of the car and ran before I peed all over myself. It only took me a second to locate the bathrooms, and to my dismay, there were no family restrooms. I was already there and seconds away from bursting. I threw myself through the swinging door. First, the smell hit me. Now let me tell you, just because it was a woman's restroom doesn't mean it wasn't disgusting. This thing smelled rancid, sort of like spoiled milk or a rotten diaper. It was bad. There were three stalls. I quickly checked for feet below the doors and saw that they were each empty. The coast was clear. I opened the first one and nearly threw up. There was piss all over the seat, used toilet paper scattered on top and next to the toilet, and it looked as if the thing had been used daily but hadn't been flushed for weeks. I shut it and very reluctantly checked the second stall. That one was clear and clean, but somehow, for some reason, smelled three times as bad as the other one, just in case. I checked the third stall. It was disgusting as well, so I stepped back and into the second and locked it. Well, it didn't really lock. The little bolt caught in the hole, but anyone that wanted inside that stall would just have to push. That creeped me out, but I figured I'd be in and out in a few seconds, so I covered the seat in toilet paper and sat down slowly. It was a relief to finally get all of that out of my system. Fifteen seconds of relief later, I was about to stand up when I heard the swinging door open. I froze. Someone had entered the room with me. Immediately, I stayed quiet as possible, trying to pretend I wasn't there. Yeah, I'm a freak. I just really hated being in a vulnerable spot like that. I waited for the person to do their business but I never heard the faucet come on. In fact, I never heard anyone open a stall. That's odd, I thought. I had heard the footsteps after the door opened, but now there was no sound. If anyone was there, I'd definitely hear them breathing at least. I waited a few more minutes. Still, no other sound came, so I assumed I was safe. Maybe somebody had walked in and backed out. Maybe someone changed their minds about coming in. I didn't know, but to be sure, I lowered my head ever so slowly to check for the feet of someone else in the room with me. 
there was a man's face staring up at me. He smiled a toothless grin. He was lying down on the bathroom floor looking up at me. He was dirty with messy gray hair and a darker gray beard. I jumped off the seat, pulling my pants up, while trying to cover up all my exposed skin with my arms. I screamed. I knew everyone in that building would have heard me. A second later, I heard laughing and the sound of footsteps running out of the bathroom. Then, maybe ten seconds after that, I could hear Jessica and Ruby. Are you okay? Sherry, what happened? Jessica called, knocking on my stall door. I could barely even talk. I didn't know I was crying, but there were tears running down my face. I remembered I needed to pull my pants up, so I did. I stepped out to see their surprised and worried faces. Oh my god, you don't look good. Did something happen? Are you hurt? Jessica wanted answers. I shook my head. Some fucking pervert was staring up at me from under the stall. Jesus, are you okay? Where'd he go? Ruby sounded angry. I don't know, he just ran out. I replied, starting to calm down. We all walked back to the car, eyes peeled for that creepy man. The girls begged me to make a police report, but I couldn't help but feel, I don't know, weird, I guess. I just wanted to get home, take a shower, get in my own bed. Besides, I only saw the man for maybe five seconds before he was up and gone. I climbed in the back seat of the car and sat back. Before we stopped, I was tired and ready to go to sleep, but now I felt wide awake and homesick, a little bit shaky. As we took off, I ended up glancing back at the place, the big neon arch hurting my eyes. Then, I saw him. I swear to God, it was the same man. He was standing exactly where we had been parked, smiling and waving goodbye at me. I got chills. Travel in packs, girls. Keep each other safe. I can only be thankful that that creepy man wasn't more desperate. Number 4. McDonald's Mugging Submitted by Candescent Skies This is one of those things that I, and probably everyone else, easily assumed would never happen to me. Needless to say, I didn't expect it, and it has left me very twitchy and nervous since then. This happened in 2007 when I lived in Kansas. There was a local McDonald's in my town that I stopped at every morning, or at least tried to. One of those half gas station, half fast food joints. This one just happened to be at a very convenient corner on my way to work, so I'd often go in, grab a McMuffin, and a can of Starbucks espresso to get my day going. This was a Tuesday, and I remember it all plain as day unfortunately. For some reason or another, the McDonald's side of the store was crowded that morning. There were at least 30 elderly folks there, chatting up the place like a bunch of teenagers. I almost walked out. The line was a bit long, and I only had 20 minutes to get to work. The drive itself was 10 minutes long, so I didn't have too long to be waiting. But I had never been late, and I was starved that morning, so I figured what the hell. I stepped in line and waited, eyeballing the menu to see if there was anything new or if there was something else I wanted, even though there was no way in hell I'd be changing up my routine. As I stood waiting, I felt something poke against my lower back. Before I could turn around, I heard someone whisper a bit too close in my ear, Don't do anything. My heart froze. I felt paralyzed. The voice continued while I tried not to panic. I'm just going to grab your wallet. Everything will be fine if you just don't move and don't say a word. I was silent, but honestly, I had never been more terrified. Maybe it was a kid with a butter knife trying to take advantage of me. Or maybe it was an ex-convict, desperate for money with a gun in his hand. I had no way to be sure, and I wasn't about to die on a Tuesday morning at a fucking McDonald's. 
the fuck is it? I heard him nearly shout behind me. He just barely managed to whisper. The man sounded pissed. That's when I realized I must have left my wallet in the car. Often, I would put my wallet in the passenger seat or in the cup holder as it would make my back hurt or my bottom uncomfortable. So where the fuck is it? He asked very hurriedly. It, it's in my car, I said nervously. Well, looks like we're going for a little ride then. He seemed relieved. Fuck, I thought. He was happy we'd be going in my car. Away from people. Away from prying eyes. He could make me go anywhere he wanted me to. God, I was so scared. My heart was racing. I wanted to take off running and scream that someone was mugging me. I was surrounded by so many people, but I felt more afraid than I've ever been in my life. And for the first time in my life, I was actually afraid I was going to die. I started thinking. Quickly, I had to figure something out. I had to get myself out of this fucking mess. If I turned around or made any sudden movements, surely he'd use the weapon that he had shoved into my spine. If I spoke too loud, I'd be dead before anyone could do anything. So, I was stuck, life endangered in the breakfast line at a McDonald's. How the hell had my life turned out that way? Anyway, there was one thing I could do that didn't require me risking the existence of an actual weapon behind me. The guy didn't sound old, but he didn't sound young either. I thought I could talk my way out of this. I swallowed hard and gathered my courage. I don't think you want that wallet, I whispered back to him. My head turned toward my side as far as I could get away with. Shut up. Start walking. He seemed to be ignoring me. I don't think ten bucks is worth fifteen years in prison. Maximum security prison, too. He must have heard me that time, because he seemed to stand still. He didn't urge me to keep walking. I tried to look even further behind me to see his face, but I couldn't. I did manage to see a woman with three unwieldy preteen boys come in. I continued. Robbery with a firearm is a first-degree felony, and I honestly don't think you'd be fast enough to shoot or stab me before I ran through those doors. What the fuck was I thinking? My heart felt like I was going to explode. Every word I whispered nearly came out stuttered, but somehow I found the power to make them sound confident. I was no lawyer, but I remembered a bit of the basic stuff from a legal studies course in high school. The kind of shit they nail into your head and can't forget. Thank God for that this time. Shut the fuck up. I'm sure you've got more money than that. I see the coat you're wearing. I saw the car you got out of. Well, if there's not more than ten. He sort of snickered. <laughs> Let's just hope there's more than ten. Fuck. It hadn't worked. And now I was sure he was threatening to kill me if I didn't have the money. And the fucked up part? I really only had ten bucks in my wallet. I had recently paid a few bills and was ready to glide through the rest of the week with food from home. I've actually done it a few times before. Come on, keep moving. He shoved the weapon in my back hard. It was cold and painful. I didn't want to move, but I felt I had no choice. Jimmy! I heard a female voice behind us shout, then, there was a hard smack as if something fell to the floor. A lot of movement behind me made me turn. The man was no longer looking. I turned around and saw it. One of the boys that had come in was wrestling around with his brother when he was shoved into my mugger. The mugger himself, who was far more thin and frail than he had sounded, and wearing a thick black hoodie, was on his ass in the floor staring at something that lay on the ground. I looked toward it. A jet black pistol. It wouldn't have been noticeable blending in with that damn hoodie he wore. In an instant, I made a break for it, and so did he. Sadly, he was closer, and he grabbed the gun. I expected the worst to happen. But it didn't. He grabbed the gun, shoved it in his pocket, and ran full speed out of the place. When I was sure he was out of the building, I looked around and saw that everyone had seen it too. They had seen the man drop the gun. Immediately, I got out my phone and called the police. 
I made a statement, told them everything. They talked to several other folks as well. In the end though, nobody got a good enough look at his face, and last I heard he was never caught. I like to hope that he ended up trying and failing again and was arrested for a different crime, because it is honestly a bit hard to sleep at night knowing that there are terrible people out there, and then there are even worse people, too, who are still at large. Number 5 Midnight McDonald's Creature Submitted by Marco Poco. This short but terrifying experience took place around late September of 2014. Me and some friends were making a night of it at my place, and at around one in the morning, we all had the munchies. We decided to hop in my van and drive over to the McDonald's that was about two miles down the road. It had been raining that night just before we left, so the empty streets had that creepy, wet glimmer from the street lamps. It was already an eerie scene. The van's air conditioner hadn't worked for months either, so I usually drove with the windows down. We pulled up to the drive through I noticed that there was no one in the parking lot, and not a single car in the drive through That was fine by me. It just meant we'd get our food more quickly. It is important to note, though, that at this particular McDonald's, there were numerous trees on the right and the restaurant itself to the left as you pulled through. It was almost a forest, but it was too thin to really be that, and just on the other side of it, the island of trees led to a pharmacy. We pulled up in front of the menu and waited to be greeted, and waited, and waited. Eventually, I said hello, trying to get someone's attention. But no one answered. The guys were telling me to just pull forward and see if they'd meet me at the window. One of them said that despite the 24-hour sign, that they might be closed for some repairs or something. I doubted that. If anything, this whole situation was kind of suspicious. Just when I decided to go ahead and pull forward to the window, one of my friends said, Whoa, 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 stop. I put my foot back on the brake and turned toward him. Did you hear that? There's something growling over there. I thought he was joking, until I turned toward where he was looking. I saw glowing yellow eyes next to a tree about five yards away from the van. I could just barely make out a low, steady growl. I assumed it was just a dog, so I rolled up the windows on that side so it didn't try to climb in or jump at us. I continued to pull forward when suddenly the thing that had been behind the tree ran out of the darkness and beside the van. I only got a brief look at it, but I was entirely sure that this was no dog. It was more the size of a grown mule, but thin and bony. Its skin was green and brown with random hair scattered all over it. I kept my foot on the brake and rolled up the rest of the windows right away. I didn't want to keep moving, just in case my mind was playing tricks on me and this was some kid playing a joke. We all waited, spooked out of our minds. I kept looking out of the windows to try to find it. The thing must have been just below us where we weren't able to see. Then, someone in the back screamed. I looked toward them and saw at the back window, just above the edge of the metal, were a set of eyes and horns. Small but pointed horns. The thing was just staring in at us. And at that moment, we all screamed and jumped away from the creature. Then, with a loud screeching noise, the creature took off back into the small patch of trees. I didn't hesitate. I drove back home. It wasn't worth a Big Mac staying next to those damned woods with that weird thing out there. I have no idea what we all saw that night, and we haven't seen anything like it since. Its eyes looked reptilian with that sort of black slit in the middle. I honestly have never seen an animal in real life or on TV that looked anything like it. And I hope I never see it again. The next time you're out on the town and just can't wait to get home to have your next meal, think twice about stopping anywhere, even McDonald's. 
You are never as safe as you want to be. All it takes is one person, one spirit, one creature to decide that you will be their next victim, and you will never see it coming. Good night. Be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Thanks. Time for the discussion question. What was your most terrifying or worst experience at McDonald's? Food poisoning? An attack? For me, it would be the time I went with my fiance one morning, trying to enjoy my bacon egg cheese biscuit, when a toddler pulled down her pants and shit in the floor. That was an entirely different kind of biscuit that I was not in the mood for.